Hey guys, well here's the 83 Dodge Ram truck and I have it pulled down into a shady working area here and uh, as promised I'm going to delve into this HEI conversion project on this truck. Um, this is a slant 6 as you can see and it has the lean burn computer right here and it does run, it runs pretty good but it's got something wrong with it when it cools off the temperature cools off the ignition just goes completely away it won't start at all so something's going on in there and uh, it's probably maybe a bad solder joint that's you know coming open when it cools down or whatever you know contracting but whatever the case is I don't care because this is going to go away um, now there's been a lot of uh, anecdote and experiences and things like that people share about these uh, lean burn systems and some of it's deserved and some of it's probably not really deserved this system is probably the original and it's it's uh well let's see it's got a date on the side of it right there that's probably that 82 52 that's probably the 52nd week of 1982 so at the very last 83 so that's probably reasonable it's still working after nearly 30 years so they're, they're not that bad but the problem is is that when they go bad you're dead I mean the, the whole ignition everything's dead and you're faced with uh, replacing this thing or doing what I'm doing and just doing away with it and going back to something else and you actually have a couple options on these what if you want to get rid of this um, you can do what I'm doing or you can go back to just a, a Chrysler ignition system with the box which is usually over here on the fender you've seen those boxes I'm sure it's got a plug on the center of it sort of and a uh, ballast resistor which is this and these usually these trucks that are not equipped with lean burn the ballast resistor is usually mounted kind of back in this area somewhere you can do that, but I'm not going to do that because um, those systems are not that bad. They work pretty well, but there again, um, they're pretty low power systems. Um, they're not really a high energy ignition per se. Uh, they are electronic, and that box is large, and it's you know it's pretty crude for what it does, you know. And you have about two or three things here that can fail, and they have failed. I've lost one of those boxes before last year on that Plymouth I had, and when it when it went out, I was just dead right in the middle of an intersection, and that was all she wrote. So um, I just decided against that. I think what I'm going to do is what I'm going to show you, and it's been done several times already. It's a common swap. So let's take a look at what we got over here on the parts table and show you what we're going to do. Um, now, first of all, of course, the lean burn itself will go away. That air cleaner will go away. I have another one in the shop. Uh, I have a standard Chrysler Slant 6 distributor with a vacuum advanced. This is not a lean burn distributor. You know a lean burn distributor because it won't have a advanced can on the side of it like this one. Now this advanced can happens to be bad. I'm going to have to buy a new one before I put this distributor in, but that's no big deal. I can do that tomorrow. And just got a pigtail for the wiring connector. I also have a matching connector to it um, that I use to do this swap with. It just ends here. I just cut it off um, and so on and so forth. And over here I have some tape, electrical tape. I have a fuse holder. I have a an electrical relay. This is a common cheap relay which I will probably quickly replace with a better one but this is all I could find on kind of short notice. I don't know that this is going to be up to the task of working continuously. We'll see. But and some wire. Uh, this is a dielectric compound. Now here is something really interesting. What this is, is this is all one assembly. But this is a what's called a. This is off a of GM. This is a GM coil. It's just a Delco. It's called an E-core for uh, high energy ignition systems and then over here 
and a bracket with it to mount on. Then over here you have a module and then you have a heat sink. It's a real nifty little thing. Now some people that have done this, they just hate these things. They don't like the way they look or they don't like them in their engine compartment, blah, 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 whatever. That's fine, but you don't have to use it. But I'm going to use it because it's just a truck and I don't care about appearances so much. I just want it to work. So. What this came off of, this came off of a 96 through a 2000 uh, Blazer or Astro Van, Safari Van, or a truck with a Vortec engine in it of those years. Um, and it's, a, it's like I said, it's a real neat little thing here. There's some things you need to remember when you're doing this swap. Uh, first of all, you cannot use this module that comes with it. You got to take this off and get rid of it because it's the wrong kind of output it's the wrong kind of wave output uh, you can use the coil you want to use the coil but not the module so take this off and throw it away and what you'll want is I thought I had one in all this junk in here and I got rid of it the distributor that I was going to use but you want just a regular old GM four pin HEI module you know you've seen them they look they resemble this but they're a little bit longer and they got kind of angled down and they got angled down they got two terminals here two terminals here that's what you want to use and then you have to mod you have to may have to modify this a little bit to work but you got to mount it on this bracket because you got to have a heat sink behind it it creates heat you cannot just mount it on the fender well you can but you really don't want to do that um, you don't want to mount it on the engine you want to mount it someplace like this one where it can dissipate the heat that it creates because they will fail now Let's tell you something about these modules. If you're going to do the swap, don't cheap out and go buy one of these house brand modules, you know, whatever the cheapest one out there is. Go buy a good one, get a Wells, Standard, Blue Streak, something, Delco, whatever. And buy a good one, and they're available anywhere. You can find them easily, and they ain't that much money. Just don't buy a cheap one, because if you buy a cheap one, you're going to be replacing it. Because when that module dies, it'll do the same thing as the box die, and it'll just... That's it. Well, it doesn't run again. So be sure you get a good one there. And it doesn't have a connector on it like this one does, so you don't worry about that connector. Um, you will probably reuse part of this. And I'm gonna at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a wiring schematic. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't know. I may just go ahead and do that earlier, but <clears throat> or provide the link to it. I don't know. The easiest way I'll figure it out one way or another, but. You'll have a link to a, a page that you can look at how to wire this up. It's real simple. It's not hard. You got a ground and you got a distributor trigger and all that. You take time to just, just check that out and you'll know how to wire it up. That's not hard. Now the relay, why we have the relay is because this thing has to have 12 volts all the time or battery voltage, whatever that may be. Uh, these old Chrysler products like this, and especially if they're even older than this one, they're notorious for having uh, low voltage conditions. So if you just tap this thing, you want, you try to run it right off the just the wire coming from the bulkhead or wherever from the inside of the car or the truck, you're probably going to burn this thing up pretty quick. They don't, they can't handle that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take voltage right off the battery through the fuse holder. Of course, you don't want to have it unfused into the relay and then you'll have a 12 volt trigger to the relay when you turn the ignition on we'll work all that out too i'll show you how that's done but uh, so what will happen is this relay is carrying the voltage and it's supplying straight to the the module and this may seem like it's a lot of work to do but it's not really it's not it's not that bad uh, just some wiring and what it is is this lean burn the spark control system it's got the functions of the control box and the ballast resistor in here so it's all kind of integrated of course it's got a this is not really a, <laughs> looks like a vacuum advance but that's not what this is it's just a load sensor so it's sort of like a crude map sensor if you will and over here we're just going to mount this thing on the fender somewhere in a good location um, You'll be able to take the coil off. You won't use this coil anymore because it'll overheat if you do. And uh, we'll probably tap into the 12 volt supply to the coil to run the relay. Uh, we'll probably do that because it's not critical to have uh, 
full 12 volts, so we ain't gonna worry about that. You don't have to change the cap, you don't have to change the plug wires. You have to take that distributor out, of course, so you need to be familiar enough with, uh, you know, doing distributor swaps. If you need to read up on that or ask me questions about it, that's fine, I'll be glad to help you. But that's essentially what we're gonna do here. We're just gonna get rid of some of the old stuff and replace it with some new stuff. And the good thing about this swap also, I hope you're still with me. I know I've talked for about 10 minutes, but uh, the plug gap on these is about 35,000, so this standard old ignition system. And when you put this <coughs> HEI, excuse me, HEI system in, the good thing is you can take your plugs out and gap them up to 45,000. So you got 10,000 more gap on them, so you got a hotter. So that the, the spark is that hot, that much more hot. So yeah, this thing ought to run pretty good. Of course, you want to undo your battery and make sure you have the vehicle locked so it can't roll and in gear and all that stuff and nobody's distracting you and bothering you and irritating you or whatever you need to kind of have your wits about you so yeah guys that's what's going to go on we're going to put this thing together and like i said I've, i like a couple parts so there'll be a part two to this but i'm probably just going to go ahead i'm not going to lead you through the entire thing i've kind of showed you the outline of it so uh, probably what i will do is i'll make another video when i've got the bracket mounted somewhere and wired up as far as I can go with it. Probably I'm thinking I'm gonna put it over there kind of behind where those uh, heater lines are running. And the thing is critical about this, you need to remember for sure, is this has to have a good ground right here. This has to be grounded. So sand all the paint off the bottom of it. Sand the paint off where you drill the holes in. Make sure it's all nice and clean and getting a good ground and even if you feel like you ought to, you just go ahead and put an extra ground cable on it because it has to have it. You can't run it with a bad ground, it'll fry the whole thing. So, so yeah, guys, and I think in this um, last of this little clip, we're just going to go ahead and start this process by taking and getting rid of some of the parts we don't need. Take the wing nut off the air cleaner lid there. And you've got a, on a slant six at least, most of them you have a vent tube going in here. For the PCV filter, take that off. And what else? You got two plugs you have to reach under and undo on this. They're just kind of up towards the front. One of them is. You have to feel your way around there. There's one. Let's see where the other one is. Well, I thought there was two, but maybe not. Let's lift this up and see here. Oh my god. Oh yeah, this one. Oh yeah, now there's two. There it is. There's the other one there. So let me go ahead and get this unattached real quick. Unattached, is that a word? I guess it is. Detached, I think. I should be saying. <clears throat> All right, here. Now these plugs you have left over, you just need to draw them back over here and just do something neat with them, get them out of the way and just tie them up on themselves and maybe tape them up so they can't ground or anything like that because that's the last we'll be using of these. I'll just put it back there somewhere. I'll take care of that in a little bit. So, let's see here. Okay, so at this point, once you got all that loose and got the wires disconnected and all the vacuum lines disconnected off the air cleaner, uh, we want to carefully uh, put this somewhere for safekeeping. Like right there. Okay, guys, let me get busy. Talk to you soon.